So in today's video we're going to be making these silky, smoky cabochons. Let's go! Right, we are back. We're going to be having a go at this silky effect. You've probably seen it in the Facebook groups. Really, really nice, cool effect. So for this one we're going to be using the Collab Resin. As always, all the links to the products I use are in the description box below. Right, let's get mixing. And as it's a new mold, I'm gonna give it a really, really fine coating of my release spray just to keep it shinier for longer. So I'm just finishing mixing my resin. Let's talk a little bit about how this came about. <laughs> it was a complete and utter fluke. I came across this by chance. I was working on the feathering effect made big by Lunar Designs and I just had to play about with some leftovers and I came up with this. The effects are going to vary and this is using mainly as a base a white pigment paste. Now these are coloured by pigment paste as well but, and I do say but, because you may think, oh, this video is no good for me. I'm going to stop watching it now. <laughs> I'm not saying this can't be done with other products. But I do think the base opaque white is a good key. Because I did try this with liquid dyes. And it's very, very dull and dark. Because I added a black background. The same as what I did on these. But because the white is more opaque, that black is a lot less visible. The same on this one. You can just see it through the gaps, but it really does highlight the colours. So this was with a liquid dye, and the dyes are non-opaque. So I used the white um, liquid dye mixed in with the colours, and it still just it wasn't opaque enough. So I think. From what I've experimented, you could use a white pigment paste or possibly even the CD bra. I may try that in a separate video. If you hit me up in the comments and you give me good watch time, because some of you have been very naughty. <laughs> My last video had about less than three minutes watch time. Um, so yeah, please help me out guys and try and watch the video all the way through. Um, I'm still getting lots of questions that are in the videos. The answers are in the videos and I, instead of watching the whole video through some of you are just skipping through and then asking questions afterwards and I, I'm, I apologize now I'm not going to be answering those questions anymore um, you might get a thumbs up from me just to help me with the algorithms but I can't keep up with it all uh, to be honest with you I know many of you are loyal and you watch the video the whole way through but some just skip and it really does affect my channel so I'm just going to continue to pour into my moulds and you will see I'm not filling it the whole way up. I'm leaving a good 2 millimeters because we need to pour resin in after our colours. So you will see I've now got two moulds on the go. <laughs> just so we've got more to demould. And just make sure that there's no bubbles touching the actual silicon mould itself. Just gently manipulate those up because we don't want those on the fronts when we demold. So now for our colours. Like I mentioned, this is very similar to the mixing for the feathering effect. I'm only going to pour a small amount in each mixing cup and we need to make sure we've got enough left over in our larger mixing cup to be able to pour over the top when it's time. Right, let's just skip this part. So in there is 2.5 mil to be precise in each cup. And now what I'm going to do is just base all of these with the white pigment paste. And that is all I'm adding to each cup. Just the end of my paintbrush. And I'll do that on all four of the pots. And always, always clean whatever you're using 
before introducing that back into the pigment paste. So once you have your base whites ready, I haven't fully mixed them in yet because I still need to add the colours. I'm just going to colour these and I'll show, if I can get it out, the amount that I'm using. Come on. And again, these pigment paste I've had since the beginning of my channel. So per colour, around about that much. It's really hard to get a precise measurement with this stuff. And if you're mixing colours, like I will make a purple with a pink and blue, or a lavender colour, the same amount of each colour that I just used there. Now for the next stage. So inside this precision bottle here, I have 99.9% isopropanol. And what I'm gonna do is just add, probably gonna have to use one of these as a tester. I'm not counting the drops. Again, very similar to that feathering technique by Luna Designs that we've covered before. If you're trying this with alcohol inks, then you'll probably need less of the isopropanol. And I've added more than what I normally would with the feathering effect. Because what I found with this is that when we add it to the resin, we want it to spread in a different way. We want it to spread more. You see that? It's spreading more than what it normally would if we're doing the feathering effect. And that I have found is what we need. So I'm just gonna apply the colors where I want into the surface of the resin. So this has probably been sitting here for about 15 minutes now. 10, 15 minutes as I've been mixing my colors. And I'm just now one at a time mixing up the colors with the isopropanol. Because if I go mixing all the isopropanol into the colors now, by the time I get to the last color, some of that alcohol is gonna evaporate so I'd have to add more. So it's better to work with one colour at a time and proceed. So I'm using that heart as my tester just to make sure that the inks are spreading and then just adding a little more isopropanol until I get the, the spreading that I want. Again, you don't need to count those drops. Just add it a few drops at a time until you get the spreading that we want. Okay, so once you've added your colors, sometimes less is best. I mean, in the ones that I've shown, I only really added about three drops of the color. So I've gone a bit, probably a bit too much in these, but we'll see. Now, I think with this, one of the key factors was the fact that I let them sit for a good 10 or 15 minutes before I decided to have a play around. And I think by my resin, leftover resin sitting there, it's deeper than the cavities inside the mold. And that has warmed and thickened a little bit, only a little bit more than the resin that's inside the cavities. So what happens is when I pour this over the top, it sinks a little bit further into the resin. This is just my theory. So <laughs> play around with it and, and just test different timings. But I'm now gonna just let that sit for about another 10 minutes. Okay, so after the 10 minutes, I'm now just slowly gonna pour this over the top of the colors in a swirling motion and that's pushing those colors down into the resin 
try and give you a closer look. You can see what it's done. So again, this is an important reason why not to fill up the mould too much. And you can see it's caused this like a, a silky sheet effect. What you could then do is over some of the areas that haven't, I mean this is really is going to be hit and miss. It is new. And you can see those ripples now inside that layer of colour. So what I then did was the same on all of them and then I'll show you what comes next. Okay, so I've poured onto my colours and now just with my dotting tool I am going to stir this now. Just like that. And this is going to give us a really, really nice swept silk effect. And you could swirl any way you like. But you know what I'm like. I like to go in my normal, <laughs> my normal swirly motion. So as long as I haven't put in too much white, we should have some really stunning effects. Now I'm gonna let this sit now, as I did when I was playing around with it, for about an hour before we go in with our black, just to ensure that the colors have kind of sunken into the resin a little bit more. Right, I'll see you soon. Okay, so it's now time to add my black alcohol ink. I might go in one or two with a white just to see if there's much of a difference. I am just coating the back or covering the back with the black and then we just wait for the demold. Right, we're all done. I made a, a bit of a mistake with <laughs> the ones that I wanted to do white. So I'm going to start with these don't use a sink of white i don't know why i've done this before in the past i really need to stop using a sink of white as a white backing <laughs> especially with stuff like this it just doesn't work i did another couple but i hid the pieces with black afterwards just to see what they come out like as another experiment. So this was another one. We've just got typical Petri stuff going on in there. Bit of a weird combination. I may never learn. And this was another one. It's a shame. That's still pretty cool. Just not what we were going for. Right, I've got a couple of experiments in here as well. I'm not going to demold those. Let's see if we've got any of the silky ribbon effects. Kind of. Not really what I wanted. It's very different. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit of a hit and miss. But as always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. Ah, this is one that I wasn't going to show. It's too late now. So this is an experiment, just trying the alcohol inks. It's different. It's a lot more solid in colour. And I think those ones. Right. Did we get any better results in your ovals? You can see it. I think maybe I just needed to wait a little bit longer for adding the the thicker resin. 
think some of it you can see up here, but still it's not quite what I was going for. A few left. Hopefully we've got a good one here somewhere. It's there, but again, it's just too, too messy for my liking. It's better up this side here. I think, as I said at the beginning, less is best. I think I've gone in with a bit too much color Still really good smoky effects. Were both of these okay? I think so. I didn't use any white in these ones. It's almost there. So close. Just not perfected yet last one yeah it's more of a smoky effect than what I was looking for but I will crack it again <laughs> right guys I'll see you for the next one bye for now